Hello, welcome to another show, here we are again. Um, so yeah, good to see you. Um, if you've not yet done so, please click on that subscribe button down below. Um, press the little bell so I can notify you every time I do a new video or live stream. Um, bit of a special show for you today. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of talking. Uh, I had a really, really good interview with, uh, with Tony Wright the other day. Um, didn't expect it to run for as long as it did. It did go for about an hour. Uh, we're not going to show you that today. We'll probably show you uh, a little bit less. I have edited, edited it down. Um, that's really hard to say when you've got your own voice echoing in your ears. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Insights of a, a live broadcaster. Um, so yeah, we're going to be playing this uh for you in a few minutes. Um, I'm also going to be broadcasting it on my new radio show I'm doing every Monday night on Sam Radio Wales. Um, all you got to do is put that in your search browser, in your internet browser, look for Sam Radio Wales, and you can listen to me every Monday night at nine o'clock with non stop rock anthems. Um, also, a little bit later on, after the show tonight, I've got another interview to do with a band all the way from California by the name of Alien Ant Farm. You've probably heard them before uh, with singles such as Glow, Movies, and of course, their Michael Jackson cover, Smooth Criminal. Um, so I'm going to be chatting to them afterwards. That's going to be broadcast on my show on Monday night uh, on Sound Radio Wales. So if you want to tune into that, it'll be really good. I'm going to be talking to the guitarist. And um, yeah, so I've, I've got a few bits coming up. Um, I've not prepared a whole lot for tonight, like I say, because we've got a, a, an interview for you now. Uh, and I've also been really busy getting things, uh, you know, moving underneath. Um, really excited about stuff I've got coming up in the pipeline. Hopefully these interviews are going to sort of broaden out a bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to be talking to uh, to more people. So yeah, really exciting. Um, like I say, you can uh, reach out on uh, Twitter or Facebook, just look for DJW Group Presents, and of course, if you want to listen to my show on Monday night at 9 o'clock, um, yeah, tune in. Um, so anyway, we're going to uh, bring Tony in now, and uh, let's have a little look at uh, what he's done. How are we doing, Tony? Hi there, how are you doing? Not too bad. How are you doing with this down situation at the moment? How are you getting on? Um, like anyone, really. Can't, I, can't, I shouldn't complain. You know, there's, there's people out there that have got like quite scary jobs and they've got to go and no one's sorted them out with the stuff that they needed to do it. it I get yeah. quite... Yeah, I get quite angry about the situation because I, I think, um, I won't swear on your radio, I think the powers that be uh, are totally geared up to the economy and not to the people. If it were me running it at this moment in time, I, w I just checked out, like you do, I spent a lot of time on um, Google. Yeah. How, how much are the top ten richest people worth in this country? And it's like... It's infuriating. Yeah, it really is. Um, just tax the feckers. You yeah. know what I mean? So you pay your tax. We won't just like threaten everybody and like let grandma die because it's cheaper to let her die than it is for you to not make a load of money this year. Um, the, you know, I, I feel a bit sorry for Branson because he employs a lot of people. I don't think he's a nasty person. No, um, no I don't think he is. I think he probably gives a lot to charity and doesn't brag about it, but you can't have over four billion quid and then say, do you mind paying a few, you know, what did it work out to? If you had 20 quid, it'd be like giving 17 pence away, didn't it? Um, yeah, he, he has been under a lot of fire recently, and, and, and as you said, he does do a lot for charity, and um, yeah, it's it's. I think it's more frustrating, because obviously you know they're playing with our money we pay the, the the tax money and it should be going to the right places and it's just not at the moment and 
They're all excited about reopening the country, and you know, we're now second in the world. Yeah. Which... But also, the, why are they reopening the country? It's just also come out. They're doing. I think they're saying this because happens to be the same day as it's come out. Why there's been so many deaths in the care homes? You know, because we needed to free up the hospital, so we didn't test yeah. any of the old people before we sent them back to the homes. Um, and at first, cause my grandma was in a nursing home, and it was it's why I'm never going to be in a nursing home. I'm going to get the grandkids to take me somewhere with a pier and a gate on the end of it and give them <laughs> two and say, get yourself up to two penny push. You know what I mean? But it was a horrendous place. And again, there's good people, that, you know, they're very wealthy. They've got um, these care homes, they're getting hundreds of pounds a week to dress your grandma up in someone else's cardigan. Wake her up when she's tired, feed her when she's not hungry, and make her watch Jeremy Kyle against her will. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So, from the fact we've got rid of Kyle now, it's pretty much the same, isn't it? But I just think when they did that, I was thinking, well, these private companies, they're very wealthy. And again, some of them are great, some of them are caring people who set up to care for people. Others are there because they've seen the brass in it and they'll have a bit of that, you know, yeah. 600 a week plus. To have someone in a room, do you know what I mean? It's it's like you're laughing. I think the problem with a lot of the older uh, politicians is they're all sort of you know in in it for the now, whereas you know things like especially when you're talking about like global warming and stuff like that, it's not it can't just be about now. It's got to be about you know our younger generation and and the people that are going to be affected by the decisions that we make now. Look at the two countries that have fared the best, and when this started, they were like going on like they're saying. Um, Look at us and look at Italy. Look how many people have died in Italy and look how many people have died here. Yeah. And this week we're saying, don't compare us with Italy. Do you know what I mean? Because we've smashed it as far as that's concerned. Yeah. That's so right when it suits them. Yeah, you've got to Iceland. And I know it's a different demographic. I know that there's more space between people. But they've got one of the youngest prime ministers in the world. It happens to be a lass. You know, same with New Zealand. Yeah. Where the countries that are it up, sorry, countries that are messing it up the most, you've got an old businessman who thinks he's still on The Apprentice, and then you've got an absolute man who might as well be on The Accomplice, because he's exactly, he's just, he rings Boris, you know, Boris rings Trump to take things out of the hospital. Why are you speaking to us, saying, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to... Um, I had a guest on last week from Florida, and um, he described Boris, I thought this was brilliant, he described Boris Johnson as Trump light. Yeah, totally. That was brilliant. We've we've yeah. literally got like the, the 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 light version of Donald Trump, and he's yeah. I, we we could chat all night about Trump and Boris. Um, we really could, because obviously you know, because we've been sitting around. All we've been doing is watching the news and watching what's been happening around the world and how people have been, you know, reacting to this and not reacting to this. Um, Directly affected me, cause. Um, as you know, I have a little coffee shop called yeah. Bloomfield School. When I'm not on tour, this place is ace. This place looks after itself. It washes its face. It employs a few people. It's full of artwork and artists, musicians, great food, and proper special coffees. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a creative space, and I, I love it. I love it. Right? Um, it gives me something to write songs about rather than just being on tour all the time. So when they first came out and they went, we're not going to shut any of the cafes and coffee shops and restaurants. I'm just telling you, to tell you not to go there. Well, that cost me a few quid for that fortnight before they shut it down and, and they furloughed. And luckily my staff are understanding enough that they'll take the 80%. Um, and then the other side, how I make my living, how I pay my way, this just, I can't see that happening again this year. But I can't tell you what I'm doing but I'm working with someone at the moment and I've had an idea that okay. really helped change, change not just not just for me. I mean, I've seen a lot of people coming and I, I do these gigs on a Friday night or when, when I've learned all the songs I do them on a Friday night. You know, I do um, and it's just a bit of fun. And, you know, I did one with Millie because Millie's lost all his work as well. Um, and I put up, I said once, this is our like PayPal if you want to help us out because Millie's lost all his work. The, the money I got, I sent to um, a friend of mine who's making scrubs for the NHS. So I gave him to the NHS. 
um, or not to the NHS, to a charity that didn't put anything in anyone's pocket other than into the materials that were needed to go to the place that it was mostly needed. Because um, it's fine, hard to find a charity, isn't it, that hasn't got someone that, you know, Just when you pay. Yeah, yeah, totally. So I did that. Um, I see a lot of, you know, I do. I go on my Instagram and every every other picture of one of my mates, there's a sponsored advert for someone who's had an idea for a song. Some of them are good. Some of them, they should not be allowed to advertise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm with you on that one. 50p fix, not to stay on it. Although 50p fix means something else now in Bradford. But, yeah, I'd um, pay them not to be on it. Uh, but I've had an idea. And again, I'm, I'm not the best businessman in the world. All these gigs I've done, I'm, I'm not making anything. So I'm not asking for anything. But... I see the venues that I'm going to need when this is over, and not just me, but music fan love, you know, music lovers are going to need them there. Yeah. And the end of July, they're not going to say to them, right? You, they're just going to say there's no more furlough, and you can't do anything, you know, unless you've got a beer garden and you can sell ten beers. That'll pay for what? Do you know what I mean? So, so we get the electricity company paid because that's my mate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I've had an idea. I'm going to work with a couple of people to try and, and create a little movement that works for for everybody. So at the end of it, that sounds good. Yeah, it's exciting. Well, it's intrigued <laughs> to see what's going to what's going to happen. Watch this space. I watch this space even. Well, speaking of venues, I mean, this time last year, I mean, you. Getting ready to set up for uh, for a gig at the Ritz, weren't you in Manchester? Oh, that was a couple of days ago, a year, a year, two years ago. Today, I've just woken up after playing Amersmith Apollo. Wow. You know, time last year, I think I've just played played the Ritz on the on the fifth. Can't remember where I played on the sixth, but then the sixth is my birthday. It was going to remember where they were on my birthday. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not going to happen, is it? So, um, so yeah, you've just had a birthday, haven't you? Happy birthday for Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've had as many for our weeks in a year now. Well, um, obviously, you know, pandemic uh, pending. Uh, this time next year, can, you know, are we going to see uh, a regular Urban Survivors 25th tour or is it something you might be looking at? Um, yeah, I mean, as, as, as someone who played in a band, uh, mostly used the term musician, I don't know if it's between me and a musician, but I can knock out a tune. Um, or an artist, right? Using any of those things that I, I feel cheeky calling myself then. Um, of course I do. Of course I, I want to get out next year. Um, I do, you know, I want to be back on tour with television. I want to be putting out another album of my own. I've got all the songs written. I'm just not allowed to go to a studio. Um... You know, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit, do you know, it's a bit like lockdown. It's a bit like being on tour. It's like being like on stuck tour. in a tour bus. Yeah, you're on a tour bus. You, you see the same people day in and day out. Um, and there's an hour of it where you get to really enjoy yourself with everyone who's come out to watch you play. But then you pretty much see the most dressing rooms look pretty, very similar inside. Yeah. The top is all look the same inside. And it's not long. You start off saying, what time is it? Before you know it, you're saying, what day is it? Then you're asking, are we still in June? Do you know what I mean? And, and then, I, I, don't even, I was surprised the other day when someone told me it was 2019. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, definitely, the older you get, I think uh, the time does start going quicker and quicker. Um, I did learn a uh well it was the reasoning behind that um which you probably know already it's you know obviously when you when you're younger you know say if you're like four years old you know two years is half your life whereas these days like two years is such a small percentage of your life um you know relatively it's it's nothing but it's i think and i think that's why it starts to feel like it goes quicker when you're older um that's a good thought i just i think i'm going to be like 150 mate I think I will. I just feel that way sometimes. I feel That's like uh, I'll be having my midlife crisis. Well, 
It's not a crisis, is it, when you buy an Harley Davidson? I'll have a midlife realization <laughs> when I get to 75. It's a yeah. midlife spoil yourself. Go on, you've earned it. You can have that. <laughs> you feel guilty about buying a Fender and a Gibson and a Harley Davidson, don't you? Yeah. Like, well, I think, you know, you, you've earned that. You've done your innings. I think it's time to pat yourself on the back and treat yourself once, and, uh, you know, every now and then. Exactly. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I know what you mean with uh, being on... T- I mean, I, I used to do security for uh, events companies, so I've, I've worked a few of your concerts front of stage. Um, <clears throat> and, and I've been in bands, you know, when I was a teenager, and, you know, there absolutely is nothing like being on the stage and seeing that crowd in front of you just singing away, you know, singing your own songs and, you know, singing your lyrics back to you and stuff like that. It's, it's got, it's, you know, it's such a buzz. Um, you know, I can, I can totally understand. Um, I think one of my, my favourite personally television songs is probably um, Alice, What's the Matter? It's um, one of those songs where it's it's so easily, you know, you can, you can tell what it is straight away. It's just, it's two notes and that's it. It's, it's, it's like... Um, it's almost like you know, like the the Jaws theme tune, or um, uh, what is it, "Under Pressure" by Bowie, and um, you know, it's just all you got here is them two notes, and you know what it is. Yeah, as soon as you say it, I hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if they'd swap them two round, though. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Imagine if Jaws had got you after that riff instead of doing. Maybe come up and do 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 do. It wouldn't quite have been as scary, would it? Bloody Jaws was fun. <laughs> I'm just trying to picture that now. Um, was it, is it Roy, uh, Roy Schneider, I think it was, in, in yeah. Jaws? You, yeah, you could just imagine he's standing there on the boat and all of a sudden you hear, ding, 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 ding. It's like, oh my God, we're going to need a bigger boat. Under yeah. pressure. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. That, oh, oh, we need to do that. Yeah, fuck. Under pressure. <laughs> Coming down on me. You know I'm going to get working on that tonight, don't you? <laughs> Y'all ready? Back to bands again. Obviously, you know, you've been with Terrorvision for, God, since, was it late 80s, I think, wasn't it? Early 90s? Yeah, I think I joined them about, you know, not as Terrorvision, as the first part of get together the four people, including Shuts back then, of, of the the people who made the first television albums, from Aldi Eye. And we've been going for probably, I don't know, when did we make them from Aldi Eye? 92, 93 or something? And we've probably been going four years or something like that. Right. So I probably joined them in 89. Yeah, I've been about 19, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, because obviously you, you know you've been with Terrorvision, but um, I think the last time I spoke to you, you were you were with uh, Like a Dog, which wow. was a, another band that you started in is it two thousand and two? Yeah, yeah, something like that. I was, I, was um, I played one of their songs last Friday on the gig, and uh, I never realised how much love people had for them because it was like we used to go and play everywhere, and it'd be like, oh, I, just, I wonder if anyone's going to turn up. But now we get, you know, when I've done the acoustic session, people asking for Like a Dog songs. People started asking if Like a Dog will ever do touring again, do you know what I mean? Wow. And he was like, he didn't like us, do you know what I mean? I really thought he didn't like us. So, And then the same day as I was learning the tune, because I had to relearn it, Tim was the guitarist, there was Paddy on drums, Sim on guitar and Paddy on bass. And then we did have a keyboard player for a bit, he was called Jay. Um, he wasn't always there, um, but that was sort of like a dog, me and them three. And um, I was learning the song, and Sim messaged me and said, oh, how are you doing? And this lot, um, if you ever fancy learning a few of the old tunes again and we're doing an acoustic set or something, it'd be a laugh. Because obviously they're all at home board, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then we next him and instead of ruminating and coming back and saying, let's have a go at have a go at doing it again, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, because I'm thinking, when, when when lockdown opens up again, I'm probably going to be really, really busy trying to get juggle everything to work again. But for the moment, I, no one tells us out, do they? So you're just guessing. It's like it's a constant flow of, I'll tell you what I'm going to tell you on Monday, 
And then on Monday yeah. they tell you they're going to come on Thursday and guess what they tell you on Thursday they'll tell you something on Sunday. You know what I mean? Well, that's what I mean. So, we, we were supposed to find out today, weren't we? And then they decided we were going to push it back till Sunday, uh, from what I've heard. Yeah, but then it's the new day tomorrow, isn't it? And it would have been the new bank holiday. That, is it tomorrow that would have been the new bank holiday? So, was that? Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. We're yeah. in May now, aren't we? Yeah, so everyone would have got out and just got smashed, wouldn't they? Yeah. If they decided on the Thursday, we're going to whip it down. The weather spoons would be running around with opening all his curtains himself, wouldn't they? <laughs> Getting dark. But... Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, so, for, for anyone... Listen at home. How would you sort of describe the the sound of like a dog? Um, maybe com- you know compared to like television. How, what what sort of difference have you got? Right. So I I came from television. Television sound was a mixture of four lads who were like loud music, but didn't necessarily all like the same loud music. Right. So I I grew up, for example, with my sister's four years older than me. So when she was 16, 17, I would have been 12, 13, she went off to college. She taped all her albums and left this record collection behind, which in, I moved into her bedroom because it was better. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's always better, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the older, older siblings always got the better bedroom. Yeah, yeah. And plus, if I moved in, there was less chance of her coming back. So, <laughs> I'm joking. She lived in Wales, she'll probably listen to this. <laughs> So I moved in there, and then I had records to play. So I had a ready-made record collection. And, yeah, it had Donovan, and it had, um, you know, what's his face, the really good guy, Leonard Cohen. We also had Rick, Back Company, Led Zeppelin, and Black Sabbath. So I missed out because I was listening to that at 13, 14 years old. I should have been listening to as a rocker. I should have been listening to ACDC and Saxon and Motorhead, but they sort of passed me by because I was too busy listening. And they are classics, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not like I to some rubbish instead. Uh, the 1910 Ohio Fruit Gum Company. And the thing, you know, there were some cracking albums in there. And then I also really liked like Bowie, and I liked... Um, you know, I, I like the undertones. I liked a lot of sort of new, new wave punk sort of stuff. Yeah. You know, Boomtap and all that kind of thing. Um, Dark is is a big like sort of Motorhead fan, um, but he also likes Sabbath. You know, there's a crossover between it all. Lee's a massive Kiss fan, but then he go, yeah, he'd like um, he'd go and see ACDC. Then Mark and Lee both like Hanoi Rocks, do you know what I mean? Shutty had like ACDC, Motorhead, Black Sabbath. So we all had these different songs that we'd like. I mean, when I auditioned for television, I sang Teenage Kicks. Right. Under- so, it, in fact, I didn't even sing it. I learned it, Lee sang it, and then they said, do you want to be in band? And it was like, it was a week and we can have it. Yeah, all yeah, right. Um, but I think those musical like, tastes, you know, all the difference in tastes have worked. That's kind of been the culmination of what television became. Because it's, I think, if you didn't all have those little sort of pockets of, of um, you know, genres that you, you liked, I, you know, I think that's kind of what. What metal bands, as television came, we signed to EMI, and they said to us, "Is there anything you particularly want?" And I looked at their roster at the time, and we said, "Yeah, we don't really want to be on EMI. Can we have our own label?" <laughs> You know, growing up listening to Free and Bad Company and stuff like that, I didn't want to hear a second-hand rate version of that band. I'm not going to name the bands, you know, because they did what they did. Yeah. But I didn't want to hear a, 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 you know, I wanted a monkey's version of the Small Faces. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to hear the Small Faces. And record companies were all guilty of that. You know, no one had signed the Beatles till the song set, sold 10 million albums and everyone they signed sounded like the Beatles till Zeppelin came out. And then they sold 30 million albums, and so everyone sounded like Led Zeppelin. And not having record labels as much anymore, having this sort of independent, um, alternative sort of way of doing stuff, not letting some some guy who went to business university to tell you what music we should be listening to. I think you know, the Coldplay are out there, but yeah. I think they were ones really that an executive would tell you what you should be listening to rather than the music fan. So, Like a Dog 
were were of that ilk. They all them lads they'd be into the sort of Manchester scene, um, but they also liked the classics, the Bob Dylan's and the Led Zeppelins, and you can't mash them up without coming up with your own flavours, really. Yeah. So, like with a mixture of, sort of Zeppelin, the Charlatans, Television, um, Bob Dylan, you know, Brie. It was, it was like say you mix them ingredients up in different um, weights, and you get a different cake each time. Well, you had um, a good mix up of uh, bands when you a couple of years back. You were touring with uh, the Wild Hearts and Reef. And uh, and Dodgy were there as well. Um, the is it uh, Brit Brit Rock Must Die? I think it was called. Oh no, Brit Rock Must Be Destroyed. That's it. Yeah, and and I didn't get that. I thought what a crap title. Really? Like, Who came up with that then? I don't know. I thought it was rubbish. And then after the first gig, I thought, Do you know what, Brit Rock was a thing because there was Brit Pop. It was like, hey, let's call it Brit Rock. And it's like a journalist must have thought of it because it's not right. Not right original, is it? If we turn the word pop into the word rock, we can have bands who've got long hair doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, to, to call it Brit Rock must be distraught, destroyed. I think those bands touring together, I mean, Dodgy are a Brit Rock band. They've probably had more Spotify hits than all the rest of us put together. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. Um, it, it sort of did, did destroyed the fact that there wasn't any such thing as Brit Rock because it couldn't. So such different bands like Reef and that sort of it's almost like surf southern California sort of like sound yeah. and the, the sort of almost sort of clashy sort of wild art sound and then there's the television Bradford sound um, they didn't fit into the same pigeonhole so to show everyone to play those gigs and at the end of it people realised they'd seen three or four bands that have nothing in common but just happen to be around at the same time. I hope it destroyed the term Brit Rock because it was a crap title to put on something just because you couldn't think about better, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was a, a great tour. It was a cracking tour. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Um, I mean, I, I went with um, uh, a good friend of mine. He, he was a massive Wild Hearts fan. Um another friend who is a big Reef fan and then myself obviously being a television fan but we all like the, the same bands anyway and it was just great yeah. that we could all go see a band that we were really passionate about but have a great night all night as well it was it was great it was just such a strange culmination of bands and it worked yeah totally and then after that I actually toured on my own with Dodgy I were opening up for Dodgy did you? they a good bunch of lads do you know what I mean it's like yeah it's um there was no, they probably wanted us to all have a fallout back in the day, do you know what I mean? They were like, who's the best player on Oasis? Well, that's a stupid question, especially if you've got bands like Space and yeah. Pulp. Like, who was the best out of them two? And it was it was just that poor journalism sort of north-south divide. Trying, but well, it is it sells papers. Don't give you the best music. Well, that exactly. Politics, they, just, they just want to create a story, don't they? And it's like, if there isn't a story, like, right, we've got to make one. Yeah, so, totally. So, you know, it gets back. Well, it not changes, does it? You know, when <laughs> exclusive to tell you that it was 50-50 whether they lived or died and spun that story. Who did he go to? He went to a paper that told you that Prince Harry was a Nazi and that Freddie Starr ate your hamster. You know what I mean? So I believe him even left now. You know what I mean? So, but that's great for you, it? That's why live music is so important. Because you can go out and see it for yourself. Make your own decision. And, you know... That tour especially, you might have gone out, maybe there was a bit of that. Do you know what? I'm a diehard television fan. I'm not really into Reef. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But if you didn't see Reef because you were there and you paid your money and you were there, you would have thought, damn, I'm not supposed to like them, but they're great. And by the end of the night, you've seen three great bands. Do you know yeah. what I mean? One of which you might have tried to avoid for most of the 90s because you were too wrapped up with your wrong patches on your back, you know? Uh, well, do you know this is this is one of the things I used to love about working uh, front of stage is I'd hear bands that I would never would have well a I'd never heard of and b if I had heard of them I wouldn't think to go and listen to them or put an album on or anything like that 
and it, it it really did broaden my sort of taste in in music even more than you know than, than I already had. I mean, I, again, I've always been a massive Wild Arts fan. I've followed them as well, um, you know, since the early nineties, <clears throat> and um, but yeah, it's I I, I love working gigs. Um, uh, I don't do it anymore. Um, I'm in a different different field of security now, but um, it's it's definitely something I look back on, and you know, I'm so I'm really glad I did it. Um, yeah. I've worked some hectic pits. I must yeah, admit. I've, I've seen them. I've seen. I've seen folk get knocked out in pits and stuff. Security, do you know what I mean? Just yeah. when people stop, just get get it in the wrong way. And um, yeah, and you've usually got a bit of a rapport actually with security. So because you're watching out for them and and you telling it when someone's coming over the top. And they're watching out for you as well, so it's, 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 there is a rapport. And you're, you're there to give them all day. Before, before I started touring, I didn't have any money. So I used to, two things. I'd go out on a Friday and Saturday still, but I lived near a student area. Right. And back then, we used to get um, student grants, you know, that you didn't have to pay back. So you'd go out on a Friday night and just look on the floor near the bar because they just, like, lose so much money. You could actually go out and, and come home with change. And then if I wanted to go see gig, I used to get up early and I'd go to the venue, whether it be the Queen's Hall or the University. Queen's Hall? Whether... Bloody hell, Bradford. Bradford, yeah. So I'd go up there uh, and I'd just get there early when the trucks were pulling up and I'd say, do you want, I'm loading in. And now, after being on tour and taking the trucks and the buses, I know that every member of our crew, if someone said, do you want an animal go, do you know what? If someone's going to look at cabs, just rent off and put that there, because you can have be on guest list, you know what I mean? So I got to see loads of bands, Leverlers, uh, Jules Holland, I looked at Jules Holland's piano, I went to Queen's Hall. Wow. To Kurt Cobain, the um, Bradford University, he went on the sound stage, desk thing, stood a bit of, you know, a book mix, just yeah. like a raise with the desk. Chris Novoselic, and the guy that looks like him out of Foo Fighters, what the call the drummer in? Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl, that's him. He looks just like the drummer out of Nirvana. Doesn't he? So he was um, on stage. He is him out of Nirvana. Oh, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I've been in lockdown too long. <laughs> and, and I just watched them them two jamming drum and bass, you know, rhythm pill. And Kurt was the next one. We were all the people in the room and I loved it. Sound wow. Vision back. Went to see them, you know. I don't even think I went to a gig. After the sound check, I think I don't. I didn't go back for them. <laughs> we were quiet. It was the quietest gig with Champions and Fam. I'd have loaded more speakers in for them if I'd have known. But yeah, that's what I used to do. Say to yourself, you get to see so many different bands, yeah, and just broaden your horizon and don't. I've seen some bands that people have told me are amazing and have not been great. One of the best. I saw ACDC twice. The other, last tour they did, and they were brilliant. So I saw them first time with Johnson, Brian Johnson, mm. who was brilliant. And then there was that thing where, have they sacked him? Has he left? Has he lost his voice? What's going on? Were they going to get to replace him? And, it, and it, it's a distinctive sound, isn't it? I mean, he's, yeah. he's Bon Scott, but he's, he's that direction, if you know what I mean. And I'm thinking, who do you get to replace him? Who are they going to get? Um, and I thought, what could I do it? Obviously, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask me. But I thought, how would I do it? And I thought, well, to sing for ATV, you've just got to sing every song like you're tickling baby, haven't you? It's like, <laughs> like, that. like that. And, uh, so I practiced that. But then they got Axel in. And I heard all these people on social media going, oh, I want my money back. I'm not going out to see them. Not with Axel, not without Brian. And uh, I went and I saw both gigs, and they were both amazing. And Axel was absolutely amazing because I think he knew that it's anger. And so he did the same thing as Brian, puts his head on the side, sings the song, steps back and lets people, you know, it, it must be an awe of anger for him to not have the ego he's supposedly got. Well, that's, but, I, I did have to take my hat off to Axel. I mean, I, I worked the, the concert, was it the Etihad, wasn't it? It was, although I saw him with Axel, um, where was that? I think we were up at Glasgow, I saw him with Axel. Oh, right, okay, yeah, we, we, yeah, we, yeah, we had them down at, yeah, we had them at the, uh, the Etihad as well. 
And um, I was the same because I mean I've worked Guns N' Roses gigs before, and he's you know he turns up an hour late or whatever. And but I think the fact that he was he was you know holding the torch for somebody else, I think that made him think right. Well, I need to do a good job here because it's not my yeah. band. If I want to mess around with my band, then that's you know that's near here or there. But the fact that it was someone else's band, and he did him proud. Yeah. He did, didn't he? He, did. he, he really did. Well, they've got the money back for tickets. <laughs> they missed they miss the trick. You know, they'll, it's, they'll, all be, they'll all stay there with it in the future. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. No, you didn't. You gave your ticket away. But yeah, it was the Etihad. I remember it was the Etihad I saw him with that. Because um, I remember the walks were. Right, so, yeah. yeah. I, was at, I was at Bruce Springsteen. I went to see Bruce Springsteen as well. That was at the Etihad. Yeah, I did that oh. as well. I did. Well, it was that summer. I did Bruce Springsteen, ACDC, and Four Nights of the Stone Roses. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see Stone, but yeah, Bruce was there as well. It was brilliant. Yeah. And again, you know, the fact that he can get on stage, the age that he is now, he'll get on stage and he'll do like a three, three and a half hour set on his own, no support, no nothing. And he still hasn't got all the way through his hits, has he? No. You know. Well. Yeah, no, he's. He's he's really really good, um, and I think he'll be one of these that'll just keep going until he until he drops, because um, yeah, yeah. he's he loves being on stage and the fans love seeing him on stage. <clears throat> um, no, fair play to him. Did you did you do much for your birthday yesterday, or was it a, a bit of a, a pipe and slippers occasion? Uh, what did I do? I must have done something. I can't remember it. And I know that I woke up this morning. And I, uh, I had a massive hangover. I felt so ill. So I probably probably started drinking as soon as I woke up. <laughs> it's got to be done. It's the only way to get through these things. Uh, yeah. I must admit, I have drunk um, an alarming amount of alcohol since this lockdown started. Uh, I think I probably put on about four or five, not maybe, maybe about a stone. I got a stone on last night. Last night alone. But it was weird, right? Can queue for ages to go to the supermarket. Oh, there's a bag in booze. So it's like I can be in and out of bag and booze in two minutes because you don't queue up. It's like sending me to bag and booze. But without advertising, I went into this booze shop that's cheap. And, uh, Other stores are available. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, they had like a lottery. Um, stand as you go in, and there's a big sticker on front of it says, um, Is this a necessary purchase? <laughs> you thought, have you seen where I am? You're asking me if a lot of necessary purchase. It's like, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, do you want any customers? <laughs> yeah, what if, I, what if I could have been? What if I could have been like? A multi multi billionaire now if they had to put me off buying that ticket. That's one of the bad sides of what we were in. Breakdown, lockdown. So, yeah. Yeah, and no, I must admit, I went out to the supermarket before and I saw the queue bending round the corner. So, <laughs> yeah, I went to my local uh, Australian wines. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> Other stalls are available. <laughs> I've, I've got to say that, unfortunately, but you, you know how it is. Um, you know, I mentioned in the Beatles before, actually. Um, have you seen the film yesterday? Um, mentioning the Beatles, other bands are available. Other, yeah, I guess. Have you seen the film uh, yesterday, uh, Danny Boyle film? No, no. Basically, the, the, the premise is... Um, there's this young lad, and he loves the Beatles, he plays their songs, and for some reason one day he wakes up and, and the Beatles just never existed. I, I've heard the story, yeah. I've heard, yeah. I've heard about it, I haven't seen it though. It's, so, it's actually so. pretty good. It's the Danny Boyle film, um, and he, he seems to be able to work his magic on anything, and, and I really enjoyed it. But I thought, what a great premise. If there was like, if there was a band or a, a song that you wish that you could have written or... You when Neil Young sings, I was thinking about what a friend had said and I was hoping it was a lie. And I just think that but just just a line is like it's like a whole poem to me. It opens up so many sort of options and of why we say that and to 
could it be me? Could it be him? Could it be her? Um, yeah, I think stand up and say, I've written this, and then come out with them those days. And, you know, I think, yeah, I think that probably be it, because I don't think there's been, been any since. I was going to see if you had any like uh, sort of guilty pleasure playlists on the go or anything like that. Anything that uh, you know you only listen to behind closed doors, sort of thing. I don't know. I, I wouldn't be embarrassed enough to think it was embarrassing, though. Would I have to listen to it. So if I told you, like, oh, I'll tell you what I really like. Um, I do a, like. I really like um, Frankie Goes to Hollywood. I think they're brilliant. You know what I mean, I think they are. Just out there, proper brilliant. I like the Pet Shop Boys. I think they're cool out, you know what I mean? But I don't think of it as like being a secret because I'm not ashamed of it. So it's like, I like it. So it's quite, um, but some people, I remember when I first got my first flat and I bought um, a cassette of Nina Cherry Raw like sushi that had just come out. Wow. And I shared this flat with the lad and he was into white and teeth, right? And I said, listen to this album, it's amazing. And he went, what is it? I said, it's been a cherry. And he went, it's not metal. And I went, no, but listen to it. And he refused to listen to it. He refused to be in the room if I played it because it wasn't metal. And he liked Y&T and I don't know what else, but Doc and something like that. So he's lost. Yeah, it's, it's funny how, you know, sort of musical snobbery can get in the way of listening to something good, isn't it? It's, uh... yeah. Dolly Parton. I think Dolly Parton, I think that um, Joe Ring by Dolly Parton is probably the best song ever written. Wow. I think it's so amazingly crafty song and so difficult for her to have actually got it out there and everything like that and put it out there. But if you listen to it, if you learn it, it breaks your heart. And it's not what people think it's about either. Oh, so I've heard it's not that. But I, was we were, I was literally talking to my next door neighbour uh, before I started chatting to you about Dolly Parton. Um, I've been trying to teach her how to play guitar and one of the first songs she wanted to learn is, is Jolene. So we, yeah. we, we were literally talking about that. Um, but the, you, yeah. you, you find a lot of songs... Um, even like upbeat songs that sound like really upbeat and really positive, and then you listen to the lyrics and you're like, "Wow, this is actually this is really deep." Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not. I don't know if you like uh, the Stereophonics at all. They've got a song on their first album, um, "Word Gets Around," called "Local Boy in the Photograph," and it's a really sort of upbeat song. And I, I, I did a cover of it recently, and it wasn't until I read the lyrics I was like, "Wow, that's, this is actually a really sad story." Yeah. Yeah, about this young young lad it gets sort of you know hit by a train and his friends go to the spot every year to kind of you know to mourn and um, pay sort of respects to him and and it's it's the same sort of thing. It's... Yeah. All right, Tony. Well, I'm I'm going to leave you, mate. I'm going to let you crack on. Um, but no, thank you very much for taking the time and sitting down chatting to us. Um, it's it's been emotional. Uh, I've learnt a few things and. Um, yeah, no, it's been really good. Um, all the best for uh, for it's Bloomfield Square. Your cafe is called, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, if uh, if you're in the area, guys, get yourself down to Bloomfield Square. Have a bit, have a slice of cake, have a cup of tea, and um, <clears throat> I think you've got some live music from time to time there as well. I think you mentioned. Um, yeah, we just we do all. It's like it's just the creative space. So we have. People come in, tell stories, we have talks. We have, um, I'm going to do a thing called a moth meet where people come in and tell stories, whether it's a true story, whether it's, it lasts five minutes or whether you have to come back for five weeks to hear the full version of it. Uh, I'm going to do that when this finishes. I've got records, I've got quite a few people come down to them. Um, put a lot of acoustic music on the room, so it's the acoustic music. So you can have a, you can have a look at them. Oh wow, yeah. that's beautiful. It's all right, isn't it? I love that. Me, these are my prints I've been doing lately. I'll show you my, my wall of words. Let me see that. Wow. That's all my, my posters and prints there. I love that. Yeah.
That's brilliant. Yeah, so get yourself down here next time you're in Otley. Well, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I'll um, I'll drop in for a brew. Oh, Excellent. Yeah. All right, then, Tony. Well, thanks for your time. Um, best of luck with things, and uh, looking forward to seeing Terrorvision hopefully uh, again very soon. And um, yeah, take care. We'll see you in a bit. So there we go. That was my little chat with Tony Wright from Terrorvision, um, going over everything there from uh, politics to uh, rewriting the Jaws theme tune, um, touch on a bit of Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain as well. Sorry, that what, a, what an amazing story that is, just standing in the mixer with Kurt Cobain. What an absolute legend. Um, so yeah, thanks for Tony to, uh, for, for chatting to me. You can tell I've not spoke to anyone for about a week, apart from Tony, because my brain is just shut down. Um, but guys, uh, I'm going to wrap that up there. I know it's been a short show today, um, but I've got another interview to do uh, later on this evening. And um, so things have got a bit busier. I've just started um, doing logos for people. Um, I've, obviously, I do all my own intros and my logos and stuff like that. So I've decided to uh, offer my services to anyone that wants a, a brand logo making up or um, you know anything for the website or anything like that. And of course, doing the animated logo. So if you know anyone that wants a brand logo for the website or the YouTube channel or an album cover, anything like that, um, just get in touch and I'll see what I could do for you. Um, but in the meantime, guys, stay safe, uh, stay indoors. I know the uh, government's looking at uh, releasing the lockdown soon, but we're not ready to reopen far from it um so stay safe guys thanks for watching as usual if you haven't yet subscribed click that red button down below hit the bell so you can be notified when i release a new video or do a live stream uh, and of course if you want to uh, like us on facebook or twitter just say hello and um I'll, I'll i'll get a better show for you next week i promise i'm going to do a couple of features and um, play some more original music as well from uh, from various artists around the country so again if you've got any music you want to send me uh, drop it to uh, info at djdavewicker.co.uk. Um, more exciting news. I've just bought the domain name davidwicker.com. I am now officially a dot .com. Um, so that's going to be, I think, the new hub for um, <clears throat> like my blogs. It's going to be like a, a landing page as well for well, I mean, my DJ site and my blogs and all this, that and the other. So it just sort of tidy up all the little uh, projects I've got going on, put them all in one place, make it easy to navigate them. Um, but yeah, hopefully I will be having a, an info at davidwicker.com email address very, very soon. Um, so yeah, that's it. Thanks for joining us. And I will see you again next Friday at four o'clock. Um, and um, yeah, if you're not doing much on Monday night and if you like your rock music, uh, tune in with me at nine o'clock on Sound Radio Wales, where I'll be playing two hours of the biggest indie grunge metal rock. Um, yeah, join us. We've got Alien Ant Farm as well. I'll be chatting to them. Till then, guys, have a great week and I will see you very, very soon. <laughs>